Okay, uh, this section, I'm going to explain how to achieve a federalist state. In other words, there are some approaches to get the, a federal government. Okay, so, there are two approaches in order to achieve federalism. And let me first by explain what is federalism, federation. Federation is a form of a government in which a sovereign power is formally divided between a central authority, like the American government in Washington, D.C., and a number of constituent regions, about 50 state governments. Therefore, each region retains some degree of control over its internal affairs. For example, the city, state of New York has a totally it's a different, it has its own uh, constitutions and laws and regulations. And the state of California has the same things too. And they share a certain things with the federal government, but they have their own responsibilities and affairs. And also, they establish a supranational institution, the federal government in Washington, D.C. And with the establishment of federal government, they can reduce conflicts and seek for a peace and security. So in order to coexist between the uh, central, the federal government and the local governments, they have to agree on the basic principles, basic principles. Among other things, this principle is the most important one. First, to cede preventing war measures to the supranational institution, preventing war measures. So if a state of New York or state of California has some conflicts with some other country, state of New York does not have war directly with the other country. The preventing war measures were already given up to the federal government. The federal government in, the Washington, in Washington, D.C. takes responsible for that conflict. And to provide other rights, other than other rights to sovereign states. Except the uh, preventing war measures, or most of the uh, rights were ceded to the sovereign states, other states in America, in case of America. Let me illustrate some details of the role of federal government. There are three kinds of roles performed by the federal government. First, arms control. Arms control. During the Cold War period, there was extreme arms race of nuclear weapons between the two superpowers. And both of the United Nations, excuse me, United States and the former Soviet Union discussed about disarmament, the so-called the SALT Treaty, Strategic Arms Limitation Talk. The SALT Treaty uh, in many places. And so they successfully reduced the number of the uh, arsenals of nuclear weapons and thermonuclear weapons. Arms control. Definitely arms control is performed by the, the federal government. And nuclear control too, nuclear control, or NPT, Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, is controlled by the federal government. If we think about the uh, contemporary uh, discussions about nuclear control between the United States and North Korea, it's the, uh, it's the job of the uh, federal government 
in America. In America, it's not a, it's not the job of the uh, uh, states uh, concerned, not state of New York or state of California or Florida, or, uh, Texas or uh, Florida, something like that. Or the development of aerospace. Obviously, uh, it is the, uh, the role of federal government thing. So it is the federal government's responsibility to build, to provide the fund money for the uh, spaceship program and go to, go to the moon or Mars and Jupiter, all those kind of things. But recently, this is a modified a little bit by the uh, private companies in America. And you can travel to the moon in a, by, uh, through a, a private uh, company, uh, companies, as a matter of fact, in America. But this is basically development of aerospace is a job and responsibility of the federal government. International environment. International environment. These days, we are experiencing the aggravating the international environment, particularly global warming, melting of the icebergs in the North Pole, and the increasing quantity of the uh, sea water, and probably in 20 years later, most of the uh, small islands in the Western Pacific will be go down below the sea level if the uh, current condition goes on. So we have to do something, all the human beings do something in order to fix the international environmental problems. This obviously the job and responsibility of the federal government. And enforcement of international laws, definitely, right? Enforcement of international laws. If some country breaks the international laws, the US or other countries must uh, step in and try to solve the problems. It is the job of the central government, excuse me, excuse me, federal government, not by the state government. State government does not have anything, no rights to do something with international laws. Third role of federal government is the punishment of deviators with, with federal force. Punishment with federal force. So the US, the Federal government has the, uh, their own uh, soldiers, their, their federal force. And also each state has the uh, defense force. But defense force, forces of the American states are not dispatched to other countries for the war. The federal forces are sent in order to solve the problem, international conflicts, international problems. So punishment of deviators must be dealt with the federal government of the United States. Now, uh, I think that you have heard of federation and also at the same time confederation. What's the difference between them? What is confederation and what is federation? Distinction between confederation or federation, words are synonymous. They have the same word, same meaning in their origin. But it has been developed in the political terminology in the United States, only in the United States. So distinction, distinction was emphasized during the American Civil War. Because before the American Civil War, the U.S. was the confederation. But after the Civil War in 1789, U.S. is the federal system. So the Khan was dropped out. So it was only the United States that distinguishes the notions of confederation and the federation. But distinction, however, 
by no means and universally observed. In other countries outside the United States, people use confederation, federation interchangeably. So confederation means to, that a union of sovereign states in which stress is laid on the autonomy of the each constituent body. So with the confederation, they stress on the autonomy of the local governments. But if the federation implies a union of states in which stress is laid on the supremacy of the common government, federal government. So with the federation, people stress the supremacy of the federal government in Washington, D.C. So in short, confederation means the autonomy of the each constituent body, autonomy of the states. But federation means the supremacy of the common government in Washington, D.C. But in outside the United States, this distinction does not have any meanings. So they are used interchangeably, confederation and federation. Let me show you a map of the, the world system. The country with the blue color has the federal systems. Over here, obviously the US, Canada, and Mexico, and Brazil, and Argentina, and Russia, India, Pakistan, and Australia. So, Simply, bigger countries tend to have federal systems, except China, except China. And the countries with, in blue color, has the unitary central government system. Obviously, uh, Korea, South Korea, and North Korea too. Japan, and China, China, and some other countries, uh, Kazakhstan, and some other countries in Asia and Africa. But it is, I'm, I'm not telling that, I'm not saying to you that the either none of the federal system nor uh, unitary system has the has a superiority or nothing. I'm not saying that. It has its own specialties. It is a unique uh, externalities and benefits and specialties. Now, national integration. How national integration is made? National integration means integration of divided or two or more countries with common interests. I told about the Vietnamese integration, or German integration, or Yemenese integration. They were the integration by, of divided nations. And also I mentioned about some regional integrations, NAFTA, APEC, ASEAN, and etc., etc. First step to make a national integration is the formation of federal government. People sit down together and talk about, and they agree about making federal system. First, they make the federal government. Second step is to create the superstructure. Superstructure means the constitution, and laws, and regulations. So federal government makes the superstructure, and later, Induce, they induce the functional integration. They create the uh, functional integration. integration. In other words, they uh, pursue the cooperation and by the many professions and many groups of the people and all those kind of stuff. So with three functions, national integration with federal system, can be achieved. So with the consent of the parties concerned, 
two parties, or three parties, if the, th those parties consent of the establishing a federal government, integration is achieved immediately, right away, right away. It's a peace-loving countries all together sit down together and, and agree to have federal government. They consent all these steps, and then integration is achieved right away, immediately, immediately. Now, there are two strategies of national integration. First, by liberals or moderates. Second, by the radicals or socialists. Let me introduce the liberal strategy of national integration first. Step one, first, people attract concern and support of the necessity of federal system rather than nation state system. Second step, with a free vote system, people elect national assemblymen or congressmen and establish a federal assembly, a federal parliament, a federal congress. And then step three, this federal assembly, congressmen, get together and they make the uh, federal treaty and fe federal constitution. They ratify later. So ratification of the federal treaty and constitution. So the crucial point of the liberal strategy is that make a free vote with a free vote and select and elect the uh, federal congressmen and they establish a federal assembly. And then later they ratify the uh, treaty and make the constitution. That's the uh, strategy of the liberals. Second strategy that I'd like to introduce is the data of radicals or socialists. Step one, campaign for nullification of nation state system. The same thing as the uh, step one of the uh, liberals. Since the nation state system does not provide the uh, welfare of the human beings, let's have a federal system. Step one. Step two. Make a draft for federal treaty and constitution. Make a constitution first with the uh, political agreements. And then later and lastly, let's for form the established federal assembly and ratify the constitution. So essence of the uh, radical strategy is make a draft of constitution, make a constitution first. And then the last step, they make the federal assembly. So in 1980s, North Korea used to take the uh, second strategy. But they don't talk about unification anymore. But in 1980s, when the Kim Il-sung was alive, they talked about the, uh, the step, the second strategy of unification. But South Korean position was the step one. Let's have a free election and elect federal congressmen and make a federal assembly and then let them make a constitution and ratify the treaty. And it is not an easy question to ask you, but which strategy suits for the Korean unification. I introduced the North Korean strategy and South Korean strategy. But still, but these days, they don't talk about unification anymore from 1990s on. 